Christianity is a relationship. Christianity is a relationship. It's not a religion. Relationship exists where there's love. Nothing will keep us on course like a deep love for the Lord. us through hardship like a sincere devotion to Christ. Loving people is important for ministry. Loving God is more important for God's word is dangerous. It's challenging in the church today. And that has reduced God's kingdom to human knowledge. The main thing about Christianity is not the work we do but the relationship we maintain. And the atmosphere produced by that relationship. What we do for God is only a reflection of the relationship. All of us who have not fallen face similar temptation. But made a different decision. I believe that one of the greatest gifts God has given us is the freedom to make decisions. A life full of choices. You can choose to walk away from wrong opportunities. You can yield to either God or the devil. You can choose to let the one who created you help you.
If you rely on the strength of our Savior, He will not allow the enemy of your soul to give you more than you can take. through your fear of failure or the extreme discouragement that comes because you have failed. Turn it around and look at it. as a life lesson. We fight through our failures and fear by maximizing our forward motion. When discouragement comes, don't stop, dig deep and fight it through. When fear hits, speed up the attack. A true prophet, the one having the divine spirit that come from above, is make peaceable and humble and refrain from all impurities impurities of this world a true prophet the bible says contents himself with fewer ones than those other men, a true prophet. This spirit speaks only when God wishes it to speak. Tell you about this spirit speaks only when God wishes it to speak. A true prophet. Prophet will not pray without spirit intimation. A true prophet. In each instance, a specific intimation comes to us from the spirit that the act should be performed. A true prophet. Without direction from the Spirit, if I give, I'm given of myself. Without direction from the Spirit, if I speak, I'm speaking of myself. If I prophesy, I'm just professor of myself. A true prophet. A true prophet shall prophesy that which he shall live to see accomplished because intimation is given by the Spirit, a true prophet. Believing demise action creates action. It requires performance. Mental action admits, admires, but does not act. Acting on the way is letting Christ act through you because Christ and the way are one. Letting the way have right of way in your life is letting Christ 
have right of way. It is the way dwelling in you, which is equivalent to Christ personally being in you. Acting on the way then gives God an opportunity to do what? To heal you, to bless you, to save you, to deliver you, to touch you. Giving the way its place is giving Christ his position of lordship. I mean, the way dominating you is the lordship of Christ in you. The problem of believing is made simple when we know that it is acting on what God has spoken. The wise man is the doer of the world. The other hears but does not act upon it. He is a sense knowledge hearer. He is a mentor a center because he responds to reason instead of the word of God. If he has faith in anything, it is in man. What man has done, science, works, organization, and so on and so forth. These are the things they have faith in. And science is all about fact, not truth. Because take and change. But the word of God is saying truth. We may be familiar to the original Greek or Hebrew. We may know the history of the world. But that is all baseless, wasted energy if you do not act on the word. If you do not leave the word and practice it, if we do not leave the word and practice it, we cannot bring Jesus on the scene. What a grave danger of diluting ourselves, deceiving ourselves. What a danger if there is no corresponding action. If we say, in the name of Jesus, without corresponding action, it will be idle, meaningless, and often time destructive. It is the doer of the world that receives things from God. I do ways may entertain men. They do not reach God. How can I do it? That is the question. It is going to be according to the ability of God that is at war in us. You have him as your wisdom. He is your redemption as well. A redemption for your weakness and your failure and your lack of ability and ignorance. We have exact knowledge, complete knowledge, perfect knowledge. That knowledge is in the way Authority and power.
authority will be meaningless without power behind it. Our reward for relationship with Jesus is power. Tell your neighbor, my reward for relationship with Jesus is power. To know God is to know his power. It is God's power working through his will and his spirit that brings about when the Holy Spirit took residence within us, He did so with the thought of aiding us in developing the Holy Character. Authority and power really must go hand in hand. Jesus, our Savior, not only had authority over unclean spirit, but also had power to force them to come up. Not only we have authority over disease and demonic activities, but we have power of God to actually control them and to tell them where to go and they will be. Jesus did not give us a powerless authority. We need to realize this and speak in keeping with this power. If not, our ministry will be full of empty talk. And there will be great danger of waste in prayer. That is prayer that does not give any results, but oftentimes causes destruction. If your prayer are not according to the truth of God's will, they will be idle meaningless, often time destructive. Is it not clear that God talk without art is outrageous nonsense? It is no sense to confess Jesus is Lord, but behave in a contrary manner. In our dealing with disease and demonic activities, we do not only need to say, I am coming in the name and the authority of Jesus, but of Authority and power.
the purpose of life is to glorify God in both good and hard time alike. When we know the purpose of our life, our life will have meaning. When you discover your purpose on earth as a Christian, no matter what comes, Lord, blessed be your name. In good times, Lord, blessed be your name. In hard times alive, Lord, blessed be your name. Whatever is your trial today will prepare you for extraordinary service. Amen. Tell your neighbor, whatever is my trial as a Christian will prepare me for extraordinary service. Your situation, your trial should not mislead you. Should not dictate the direction of your prayer. You can be sick and say, thank you, Jesus, in your prayer. Instead of hear me, hear me, you say, thank you, Jesus. The different between we Christian and others, we Christian, our trial, our situation, prepare us for extraordinary service. Why others, their trial, meant to destroy them, to keep them away from God? No one will maintain the position of honor. They don't know what it means to be dishonored. Are you pass it through? Barren. Poverty. Imprisonment. Love. Deception. Success. Enjoyment. Marital problems. Good health. Achievement. Set Tension back. and pressure. Don't concentrate on your situation. Satisfaction in life is not about having children. Money or other worldly possessions. You have to experience God until you experience God that will be the satisfaction. A sense of hunger to know what life is all about. A desire to know what happens after life is over, after death. Satan tempts us to put on a sensational display of power. He frightens us by displaying fake power and causes people to panic. The greatest thing Satan aims at in tempting good people is to overthrow their position as children of God. Tell your neighbor, the greatest thing Satan aims at in tempting good people is to overthrow their position as children of God. Cut off their dependence on God. One. their duty to God, to their communion with God, three, these are the three aims. 
the devil aim to shake our faith in the world and bring us to question the truth of the world. If we receive so much comfort from God, shall we not receive some affliction? Pain, headache, temptation. We should serve as a check to our comfort. John 14, verse 27. Are you there? Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled. The peace of the world is time bound. The peace of God is for eternity. Everything about it. Don't concentrate on your situation. Encourage you words. This is about the Samaritan woman, the sinful Samaritan woman. Jesus did not reject the sinful Samaritan woman, but rather he showed her love, acceptance, by offering her living water. Jesus accepts anyone who comes to him in faith, even those who previously rejected him. Jesus will never reject anyone who comes to him to be cleansed from sin. Our God gives healing when we are sick. You sick. Jesus will never reject you today in Jesus' name. Our God gives blessing when we are poor. You poor. Jesus will never reject you in Jesus Christ's name. Are you buried? Our God says there shall be no buried in the house. Jesus will never reject you today in Jesus' name. Don't misinterpret God's silence as rejection. Let's take a look at the book of uh, Romans 8. I will read just 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who? I can hear you. Nothing anyone who possibly do to you can suffer that connection not, not to you who ever do can damn the unstoppable love of God his love for you is unmeasurable unrelenting unceasing, unstoppable, undeniable, unconditional. Who 
is worthy? Ask the devil, who is worthy? I can hear you. Who is that is the question. Who is worthy of my faith? Who is worthy of my affection? Who is worthy of my devotion? And who is worthy of my time, my money, my possession? Who is worthy of my hand, my feet, my mind, my heart? Who is worth to die for? Go ahead to J for. Who is worthy of my giving? Worthy is the Lamb. He was slain to receive power, wisdom, strength, honor, praise, adoration. Worthy is the Lamb. Encourage you, words. That you are born again does not mean you cannot make mistake. The difference between you and others, you already have a relationship with God. You should know that since you have relationship with Him, you can immediately go to God about your behavior and he will help you get back on your feet and forgive you and help you not to make the same decision again everyone has been tempted you have been tempted i have been tempted we will continue to be challenged with issue that violate our conscience. We all face temptation to do the wrong thing. Glory be to God, there is a way. Jesus is the way. When change comes to your life, you will be directed by your heavenly father not by the influence of others broken things become useful in God's hand there's no one Jesus cannot turn around no one no matter what you might have done where you are coming from tell your neighbor broken things become useful in God's hand Your life will go smoother when you go by the book. Tell your neighbor, my life will run smoother when I go by the book. When you are born again, you think differently. You dream differently. You have a sensitivity that you never had. You have the privilege of letting your creator assist you in all you do tell your neighbor if you are born again your pain can prepare you for extraordinary service that is what me by born again that does not mean born again will not have pain there will be pain but your pain will prepare you for extraordinary service The highest motive for serving God is the desire to please Him. If you have not experienced God, there will be dissatisfaction, a sense of hunger to know what life is all about, a desire. To know what happened after life is over you know you are born again when everything become different you think 
differently because you are a changed person you are not directed by the influence of others but you are directed by the influence of the Heavenly Father you cannot compare yourself to others because creator of heaven and head is assisting you with me I mean the head of immaterial world is assessing you the dividend of Banigay is when the creator of heaven and earth begin to assist you that is the dividend your dividend of democracy faith acts in concert faith acts in concert with other spiritual forces of God to accomplish the purpose of God. Such other areas as holiness, consecration, judgment, evangelism, and the love of God work with faith in concert to develop man spiritually. Those people who choose to pick the scripture and not eager about those other areas and the love of God which work in concert to develop man spiritually faith works by love to be effective strong faith is impossible without love and where is love today in first corinthians 13 verse 13 and now abide faith hope love this trade but the greatest of this is love many believe that faith is the greatest spiritual quality but the Bible says love is the greatest love is the more important because it is the force that set faith working. A tribute to my late mother. Listen to this. It said to me when I do not seem to receive from God or hear from God, I should look into my love work many believers have start feed their faith by failing to walk in love failures to walk in love can almost shut down one's spiritual work with the Lord.
faith acts in concert it's not an isolated spiritual force faith is not alone faith is not solo faith acts in concert faith is not an isolated spiritual force that means faith was never meant to work alone faith works in conjunction with other spiritual forces of god such as love and patience prayer is a force it's a spiritual force For prayer to be spiritual force, it must be filled with scripture. It must be accompanied with scripture. Scriptural prayer releases the power of God. It takes faith to activate prayer, to energize prayer. to give force to prayer. All the spiritual forces that God has sent into existence, love, patience, prayer, faith, must work together in order to accomplish the purpose of God. Must work in harmony, in unity, in order to accomplish the purpose of God. To function completely, properly, in the natural and the, in the spiritual realm, man's threefold nature spirit soul body must work together man is a divine being possessed of spirit soul and body man is a spirit being the real things about man and not his body and not his flesh. Man's deliverance is threefold. God delivers man spiritually from the hand of the enemy. God delivers man physically from disease, hunger, and want. God delivers man mentally from being ruled by the senses and brings his spirit. Faith is not an isolated spiritual force. Encouraging words. Forgiveness paves the way. Take note of that. Forgiveness what? Tape the way for harmonious relationship, even with your enemy. Being unwilling to forgive shows 
that you have not understood or benefited from God's forgiveness. When you love your enemy and pray for those who hate you, this releases you from the destructive emotions of anger. This releases you from what? From the destructive emotions of anger. Bitterness. Revenge. And others. Jesus forgave even those who mocked and killed him. We should be more concerned about our offenders and their relationship with God and less about not seeing our own grudges and separately that is ill will the person most hurt by unforgiveness is you an unforgiving attitude not only destroys your relationships but also poison your soul don't repay evil for evil don't retaliate with heart instead when people hurt you take them back with lesson that is what God has called us to do and he will bless us for it if you fail to receive forgiveness and forgive those who sin against you you also will find yourself in a torture chamber. Encouraging words. There are only three things on this earth that will last faith hope and love and the greatest is love the greatest is love this is what the bible says god is love and he that abides in love abides in god and god in him love looks around to see who is in need tell your neighbor love looks around to see who is in need remember we begin to succeed with our life when the problems and hurts of others matter to us the wound of one is wound of all the pain of others is pain of all love frees me in the present remember it is the present that present problems it is only through love we are able to respond to God 
and to others at present to respond to God. First, you must forgive yourself and your neighbors and free them in the present. What a danger is a religion of words if there is no corresponding action. You have nothing but a mental ascent without action. How does the love of God work? How does the love of God function in a man who only think walk with empty word, with idle word, if you give everything you own to the poor, but you don't love, no matter what you say, no matter what you believe, no matter what you do, you are bankrupt without love. Tell your neighbor, let love lead. Once again, let love lead. If you abide in love, and love abide in you, you abide in God. Love never gives up. Love is always there to act. No matter what happens, no matter what comes, love is always there to act. In the face of persecution, in the face of intimidation, in the face of trial, in the face of temptation, love is always there to act. Open your lips and say this prayer. Lord, give me love enough to overlook the mistake of others. Lord, let me rejoice when others do well. Love cares more for others than for self. Love does not want what it does not have. Love is positive. It does not want anything negative. Love is good. It does not want anything bad. Love does not want hatred because love is love. Love does not strut. Love does not have swollen head. Love stops. Love does not belittle anyone. Love does not look down of others. Love does not force itself on others. Love put up with anything means love is tolerant. Love is determined. Love has a year for the best which is yet to come. Love looks for the best. Love keeps going to the end, no matter the obstacle, no matter the difficulty. Above all, if I speak in the tongues of angels, but I do not love others, I'm simply making a noise. 
up into the air. Tell your neighbor, if I speak in the tongues of angels, but I do not love others, I'm simply making a noise. If I can prophesy the future and understand your mysteries or if I know everything or have faith to move mountains but I do not love others I have accomplished nothing in life a person who does not love others cannot be entrusted with the power of God he will misappropriate it misuse it to hurt himself and others when you have love of God you will look around you to see who is in need and the best investment is help help is the best investment prayed and hoped but the thing that is yet to be applied is love in the first Corinthians 13 13 there are only three things on this earth that will last faith hope and love the greatest is love. Since the greatest is love, we need to make the greatest sacrifice. Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? Peter answered, you know that I love you. Three times, Jesus responded by giving Peter a responsibility. Keep my lambs. Shepherd my sheep. And keep my sheep. Before we can be responsible to Jesus, it must be because of our love for him. If you help your fellow brother, then you help Jesus. If you do your fellow brother, then you do Jesus. If you care for your fellow brother, then you care for Jesus. If you ignore your fellow brother, then you ignore Jesus. Jesus asked Peter one of the most significant and penetrating, in fact, one of the most dangerous questions ever asked do you love me Jesus asked Peter three times do you love me he asked him this question three times before giving him the commission to shepherd his sheep We 
whether you are educated or not whether you are a farmer or a professor there is hope the hope in loving jesus in other words loving others jesus repeated the question so that the concept to be crystal clear do you love me faith hope and love love is the greatest Then their situation prepare them for extraordinary service. Tell your neighbor, Christian, their situation prepare them for extraordinary service. That's it. The more that situation, the more you draw close to God. The more that pain, the more you draw closer you fast you pray the more that trouble the more your attention for God for our faith to be consistent it must be based on something more stable than feelings you need no more than open the eyes of your faith you cannot see an all until the eyes of your faith are opened when we are in the dark we are likely to be frightening this is why Christian today without a fighting within our fears before you can become a Christian you must be adopted by the Holy Ghost overcome your doubt if you are genuinely seeking salvation from God in the midst of doubt God will not mind because at the end your doubt will move you closer to him in cases of prolonged uncomfortable situation such as sickness poverty and life one seems to be tempted to doubt his ability and desire to help what one has not experienced before in one's life cropping up will generate anxiety, worry, panic, doubt in one's faith. Overcome your doubt. Doubt can become sin if it leads you away from God. So skepticism cynicism and then to hard heartedness as you move closer to God you will find the strength to trust God and your faith will grow even stronger that comes when we fail 
to stop long enough to serve all the evidence. God gives everyone plenty of evidence to believe in Him. When you take your time to reveal God's track record in your life, that will grow confident that He will work in your present situation. As you recall God's track record in your life, you will grow confident that a solution is forthcoming. You will grow confident that your present situation will be overcome by God. Overcome your doubts. Faith is the transformative power of the universe. The power of change. A change from sickness to health. A change from yoke to deliverance. A change from weakness to strength. A faithless generation to a faithful generation. A change from poverty to blessing. With Jesus in your life, you will be in a future state. As if it were already true or here. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus will become your coach. And when Jesus becomes your coach, you will be asked to see what is not yet seen. You will be asked to do what is not yet done. And you will be asked to say what is not yet said until you experience Jesus. There will be dissatisfaction in your life. Tell your neighbor, until you experience Jesus, there will be dissatisfaction in your life. When you have a shock stage, your mental and emotional resources, you can no longer rely on yourself. You simply need to trust something, someone, stronger, wiser, and smarter than yourself. Jesus, who can raise the dead, is our choice. That is why we are here today. He delivered me and he can deliver you. He rescued me and he will rescue you. He will in the future stay where you are. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, stay where you are. Hold steadily and trust. Don't listen to the temptation to act out of character or react badly to the emotional ways that you are experiencing. reliance on God. Many people 
in the Bible, whom we regard as a pillar of faith, had some doubt as well. Not that they had less faith, but their faith was challenged in a new way. God does not mind doubt as long as we are seeking answer from Him in the midst of doubt. Allow your doubt to move you closer to God, not further away from God. Be patient and let God answer your question on his schedule, not yours. We can serve God not in the old way, but in the new way of living in the spirit if you are wrestling without attend a living church and stay close to other living Christians resist the temptation to isolate yourself because doubt feeds on loneliness never doubt your salvation. Satan can never snatch you away from God. He will try, he will not succeed. Reliance on God. Faith is a spiritual force. Faith of all we have to understand that faith is a spiritual force. In other words, faith is a spiritual issue. It is not a natural issue. Christ dwells in our hearts through faith. It is not the amount of prayer you pray, but the faith you put into prayer that counts. Faith is of man's recreated spirit. Prayer is not right if it does not spring from faith. On the way makes Jesus Christ truly real to the believer. When we are dealing with faith in God, faith from God, faith of God, we must realize that God is spirit in that John 4 verse 24. Therefore, faith in Him is a spiritual issue to be discerned and operated spiritually. Prayer is an expression of believing. Because I believe, I say amen. It is the way dwelling in us which is equivalent to Christ himself being us that is me Christ and the way I want faith this is spiritual force When David was brought to the king to defend his cause, he simply testified of how God 
had delivered him, saved him, rescued him from the mouth of lion and bear in this tender age. Today, when we come out for testimony, it is nothing but the immediate goodness of God. Remember the sickness you had in the past. The same sickness others had and died. Why many others are still on the sickbed? Life is in stages. In the college of God, However brilliant you may be, you will not be given double promotion. You will take every course. In the University of God, however brilliant you may be, you will not be given double promotion. You will take every course. Because each cause serves a purpose. People of God, God has a time for everything. A time to be born. A time to grow. A time to face persecution. A time to overcome. And a time to show the proceeds of victory. No matter how good you are, no matter how clever you are, there is always another level to reach for. clearly do you really see your life when you look at your life what do you see what does Jesus see do you see your life the way Jesus sees it where's from the Holy Ghost don't take the credit all we are doing is giving back what we have been given from his generous hand. Everything we, we have is actually only being borrowed from him. The object of our faith is God. Jesus said, have faith in God unlike an unfortunate amount of teaching today that seems to encourage believers to have faith in faith because he is good I can bring my request to him. Share my concern with him and cast my care upon him. Realizing that he is God and I'm not. That he is a father. And I'm but a child.
He is a shepherd. And I'm a strange sheep. We often hear that prayer changes things. But it is not entirely true. Take note of that. It is not what? It is not entirely true. Prayer changes us. Faith changes things. Prayer changes our focus. And faith causes things to happen. Today, we pray, but lack necessary faith to release the belief in our hearts. There is power in our mouth. The belief in our heart is released by faith out of our mouth. Faith requires us to speak the word before we feel or see the result. Power of change. The battle between the stone and the water. In time, the water wins. We all fight common battles camouflage differently I mean Satan is our common enemy the author of different affliction faith is the transformative power let's have say transformative power that is faith is the transformative power of the universe the power of change from what you are now to what you want to become from a faithless generation to a faithful generation Faith looks back. Let's someone say, faith looks back. I can hear you. Faith tells me Jesus came. Jesus came because relationship was broken his mission and vision was to restore the relationship that was broken he came to restore the relationship and fellowship between God and man faith allows me to embrace what Jesus did for me on the cross. Faith reminds me that my sins are forgiven. Therefore, I don't have to worry about or being haunted by my past nothing makes us love a person so much as praying for him the more I pray for you the more I love you the less I pray for you the less I love you
how strange, yet wholly true. The weight filled with power of God. The Father's war shall do. Christian can make bad mistakes. However, because of their relationship with God, they know that they can immediately go to God over their behaviors and God will help them get them back on their feet, forgive them, and they help them not to make mistakes again. Tell your neighbor, what we see as a disadvantage can be turned into advantage. This was true of the Apostle Paul. A thorn in his flesh became an opportunity for God's strength to be seen in his weakness. If we receive a blessing why should we not expect some pain which will serve as a check to make the blessing the more valuable If we do not worship God, who is a spirit? In the spirit, we miss the end of worship. We must depend upon God's spirit for strength and assistance. Lay our soul under his influence and oppression. God is in all ages gathering into himself a generation of spiritual worshippers. The name Jesus has power. Indeed, but only among those who are committed to the glory of God. If we resist the devil by a true and lively faith, Satan will flee from us. But if we think to resist him by chanting name Jesus as a spare or charm, Satan will prevail. Your values must be tested against facts and experiences when we fearlessly act upon the words of God and joyously cast our every care on him victory is as sure as the rising of the sun when you know that the word is God speaking to you now, it is not difficult to act upon it. Encouraging Words by T.B. Joshua Daniel 3, 16 What are we saying here? 
we people of God, we do not defend ourselves because we have a defender. The lives of believers in both Old Testament and New Testament testify that being faithful to God does not eliminate adversity. We should recognize that it may be a sign of being faithful to God. When our faith is tested, our endurance has a chance to grow. Adversity can also build you up and strengthen your faith. The year of combat. What does this mean? Mean dream again. That is draw greater plan. Encouraging words by TB Joshua. Who is a prophet? The belief of people is that the prophet is only out to predict or foretell the future. There are two classes of prophets. We have a prophet and we have general practitioner one. The first class of prophets are those who have the ability to communicate the saving will of God to others. They may be called general practitioners or general prophets. They are true preacher, true teacher. Take note of that because of their deep knowledge of the scripture. They teach and preach about things both announced and known. The other prophets are those who receive direct and specific message from God. We are not used to this prophet. That is why most time the prophet is doubted and criticized. The unbelief is high because of worldly what? Detraction. Because of what? Worldly detraction. Take note. You need the spirit of a prophet to recognize, to understand, or to know a prophet. Who is a prophet? If you 
love yourself as much as you should, you will learn that if you feel pain, you are living outside the truth where your light is coming from. Tell your neighbor, keep your focus. Identify your source. Regardless of which translation we prefer, faith, this with things we cannot see. Faith, in the actual sense, takes us behind, look here, the visible to the invisible. This is visible. Where you are now, faith takes us behind the visible here to the invisible if possible we walk by fear not by sight this means if you walk by faith you do not need sight if we walk by faith we do not need what? We do not need sight. And if we walk by sight, we do not need what? We do not need faith. Faith is related solely and exclusively to two realities to God and to God's will. The thing that keeps us from despairing is not what we see, but what we believe. Faith enables us to see the unseen and thus enable us to endure when visible war offer us no hope, no encouragement. Without faith, you will continue to commit the word of God into memory. You will read Bible, you will know Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but all will be committed to where? We call it brain power. Call it brain power. Say brain power. brain power. Brain power. There is supernatural power of God and there is natural one. Brain power. The one you study in the school. When you read without the help of Holy Spirit, we commit this to memory. But by faith, not only commit to memory, but let the way become an integral part of your being because it lives in you. Flesh should have been translated to senses. Flesh should have been what? So that you understand it well. Flesh should have been translated to senses. The sins of the flesh are the sins of the senses. Worry about tomorrow. Jesus begins by saying, let not your heart be troubled. The law is not saying here that we lack Listen to be troubled. 
what he is really saying is that there is greater reason not to be. We can all acknowledge that life is filled with trouble. This is why the book of Job 5 verse 7 says, Man is born to trouble. From the moment you leave your mother's womb, you encounter trouble. Life begins with a doctor slap on our backside. We all face almost daily disappointments. We want to be strong, but we find ourselves weak. We want to be courageous, but we feel overcome by fear. We want to be successful, but we fail repeatedly. We want to be loved, but people seem indifferent to us. The better a man is, the worse he is thought of by his rivals. Everything good in you is the cause of envy and the effect and resource. The consequence of envy is everything bad. The cause of killing, stealing, and destruction is the urge to store up wealth here on earth. Worry about tomorrow. Worrying about future destroys our sense of judgment. When you worry about tomorrow, about future, you cripple your ability to think, your ability to act and exercise faith in the present. When we are anxious about tomorrow, you will not be able to differentiate between God's supplies and Satan's faith. Call it faith. B-A-I-T. Today's trouble is enough for today. God is aware of our challenges and He prepares us for each day's challenges. If you are a follower of Him, a believer, you will use today's supplies and let tomorrow be. Use today's supply and let next be. No matter the message, no matter what is happening around you, don't be agitated and stressed out and thrown into confusion. Worry about tomorrow. It is never proper to base faith on our improvement after prayer. There is no reason for faith as good as God's word. Our looking unto God's promise is a good reason for looking to God for mercy. Then there is no time to stop looking until God withdraws his words. Tell your neighbor, our looking, our looking unto God's promises is a good reason for looking to God for mercy. Then there is no time to stop looking 
unto God withdraws his word. It honors God to believe Him even when every sense contradicts Him. And He promised to honor those who honor Him. Tell your neighbor, it honors God to believe Him why every sense contradicts him he promised to honor those who honor him hold fast to your confidence in God's way when your faith is tested what is your confidence? What is my confidence? Jesus is my healer, whether he heal me or not. That is my confidence. My confidence, Jesus is my savior, whether he saved me or not. Jesus is my redeemer, whether he redeemed me or not. This is my confidence. I have said, outward affliction wants and burden are the great arguments Satan uses to make people of God question their sonship. greatest interest is to overthrow you, to overthrow your relation to God as a father. So this is why your situation, your condition should not mislead you. When you believe is where you possess the thing that is where has guaranteed. When you believe is where you pray and you know it is his way. When you pray in that name, Jesus takes over it. Then it is in his care. Your word, then in Jesus' name, makes things come into being. I mean, come to pass. It is no longer your body as long as you do not repudiate it by a wrong profession. My heart knows that the case is settled. No matter the signs, no matter the situation and experiences, my heart knows that the case is settled. You ask for healing, so you get out of bed and walk. You ask for money, so you make provision to pay the bill. You ask for rain, so you put on your rain coat. You are ready when the rain comes. Prayer should be followed by an attitude of absolute trust in Christ that He is working out the answer. Your prayer is based upon his word. My prayer is based upon his word. 
scriptural prayer releases the power of God. Tell your number, feel your prayer with the scripture. Because scriptural prayer releases the power of God. Prayer and reading the Bible should always go together. One is not complete without the other. The heart must be rooted and granted in the word so that what God says is final with you. We pray according to his way. We are assured that he heard us. And if he hears us, that is as good as an answer. Your love for Christ by T.B. Joshua. Human love is but a shadow of God's love. Do you love me more than this? Nothing can compare with the power of this word spoken from the heart. Love can make a king abdicate his throne that is resigned. Love can make poor boy, poor man, beggar, become a prince. If spoken from the heart, God is love. He is without fear. That is love. Without equal, equivalent, equivalent. There is nothing to compare richer than any minerals love warmer than any sun that's love for you god loves the orphans the strangers the widows the needy just name them therefore man if he loves God truly is under obligation to love his fellow man love cannot exist without relationship it can be manifested only where there is an object to be loved you can deny God, you can ignore God, you can ridicule him, but his law remains constant and unchanging through his love. We love by his love. We are a new man. In his love, we have newness of life. God's love centers in his will. And what is his way now? Let's define it. It is his way to give. It is our way to give back. And also to receive. The gifts freely given. Knowing God's love. Will enable you to press on to tomorrow. Tell your neighbor will enable you to press on to tomorrow nothing is stronger than love greater than all because god is love and god is greater than all your love for christ by tb joshua wise men from the east their offerings and gifts.
Jesus was born. Gifts and offerings began to pour in from far and near. Thus, giving became the very basis of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wise men still seek Jesus. Season's Greetings from Emmanuel TV.